you got to go to the right people with the right message. The right people, and we call it in our coaching program, the A customer. Mm -hmm. Don't work hard to make a Z customer an A customer. Mm -hmm. Because think about that. When you have a Z customer, you got to take them all the way up to A. That's good. That's a long, heavy lift. Mm -hmm. Versus if you really begin and get more focused with your targeting, your targeting will let you know what an A customer look like, and at the very least, you're gonna land on a B. Hi, I'm Walter Bond, former NBA athlete, Hall of Fame motivational speaker, and business accelerator. And I'm Antoinette Bond. I'm a real basketball wife, a mom, I'm a business owner, and a business acceleration coach. And this podcast is for business leaders, entrepreneurs, or anyone who's trying to get to their next level and just needs more support in business. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the huddle. huddle. All right, welcome to the huddle. This is your host, Walter Bond, along with my beautiful and wonderful wife. Oh, Antoinette. Oh, he's so sweet. All right. And today we have a special guest. It's all green. <laughs> a special guest. You know, not only is he the president of Shark Mindset Selling, he's also a dear friend. Thank and you, sir. Very valuable, uh, very learned, an expert, facilitator, coach, uh, trainer. And Daniel Grissom, welcome to the huddle. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. Good to be a member of the team and the family. Yeah. yeah. Let's, you know, let's make some good things happen. I believe in the hype machine. Um, you know, you've been sales training a long time. Sure. You know, give a, give our listeners a context of the type of experience you have sales training and the kind of clients you work with. All right. Well, a couple of things. Uh, number one, it's been 20 years, 20 countries, probably over 200,000 sales professionals. Wow. And what I've discovered, even though, you know, you call me or we call ourselves sales trainers, people don't want sales training. What they want is deals close fast. They don't want role play. They want real play. Uh, they don't want fake. They want authentic strategy session. And that's what we bring to the table now a Sharp Mindset Selling. And so Google, IBM, ExxonMobil, Eli Lilly, Walgreens, the NASDAQ, Africa, Asia, uh, I was over in Johannesburg, I was over in Dubai, and the point here is what I've discovered is no matter what country you go to, no, no matter what industry you go to, there's a set of value-based principles that separate top performers from average performers in terms of sales and sales management. And I think we're gonna talk about some of those today. Wow, that's exciting, because you know what? You know, my first job out of college, I was hired for Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Go I, right, I was in the selling. And the cool thing about that was I was a natural salesperson. I started selling. Remember that store, Merry Go Round? That mm. was one of my first jobs. Okay. At Westland Mall and okay, Highland. Okay, a little retail store. A little retail, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's a cool thing about a lot of times people in sales, they started off kind of in that retail space. You get your teeth cut like in these different arenas and then you take that background into like more corporate environment. Mm -hmm. And there's some fundamentals though that you learn when you're working in the retail space mm -hmm. because within retail, the things you gotta do really well is get attention. Very much, you gotta not only get attention, but the second thing you gotta do well when a woman is trying on clothes, you gotta tell her, girl, you look amazing. And that connectivity that I learned from retail, actually, it's kind of has been with me ever since. I remember when I worked at Episode, same thing. It's like that kind of hyping people, letting people know that you see them, yeah. value them, yeah. and you know them. Yeah, connecting, or as your husband says, the likability factor. But there's an aha you just brought up, and I think our audience ought to take Maybe just a quick note. You said merry-go-round. Mm. By the way, didn't they have some cheap stuff? Did cheap, cheap clothes, okay. Okay. child. Okay. That's what I thought. Let okay. me tell you. Okay, yeah. merry-go-round, <laughs> gauchos, and all kinds of stuff. Yes. But hey, we say sales, but the research shows that there are two types of seller. The small set and the major set. Stay with me. We say sales, but when you double-click on that, there is the sales that happens right here at uh, Fort Lauderdale um, Airport. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, Delta uh, American Express, come on over here, sir. Come on over here. We call that sales, but that is a transactional sale. It's one decision maker, typically. Uh, and so it's not an ongoing relationship. It's usually a low dollar decision, merry-go-round. And on the other side of the equation would be the major or the strategic sale. That's 
That sale is a little different. You have multiple decision makers. You have multiple year contracts. It's probably multi-million dollar sales. So oftentimes we say sales without making the distinction that there is the simple sale of the transactional mm. sale and the major or the strategic sale. One thing I've noticed, and I'm very thankful to my wife, you know, when basketball ended, I did not have a job. I had never had a job. And thankfully, she had a sales background and was easily hireable. I mean, as soon as, you know, basketball was over, she got a job doing pharmaceuticals. And I was just trying to figure out, OK, corporate America, what is that about? Mm -hmm. What is what is my skill set? How do I fit? But here's my first question. OK, and this is something that I figured out just organically being in business. All the big companies get big sales forces. Mm -hmm. Now, I find that ironic that the big companies have big sales forces. I'm going to say it one more time. The big companies have big sales forces. But when you get down to small business owners, okay. you know, 10 employees, mm -hmm. 20 employees, mm -hmm. 30 employees, mm -hmm. in many cases, these small business owners don't even have a dedicated sales force. And sometimes it's the entrepreneur owner who does the sales part-time because sure. he wearing or she's wearing multiple hats. Sure. So from your lens and your experience with over two decades of sales training, mm -hmm. frame up how important selling actually is for any business. Well, sales is important to everyone, true. But many times people define sales and say, I'm not in sales because they see it as the transactional person, the used car lot person. Mm -hmm. Many of us, though, would say, yeah, I'm on the consultative side. The left side, transactional, is to sell. The right side is to solve and to serve. And I know that's one of your sweet spots here. Well, you know, as you say that, that reminded me because, right, although I my both of my roles at Dr. Pepper and at GlaxoSmithKline, I was not called a salesperson. Mm -hmm. I would have never been called a salesperson because mm -hmm. it's kind of like a kind of like a less than word. Mm -hmm. I was an account manager. We're developing business. Come on. And so I agree with that. I'm glad you brought that to the forefront. I love that within our shark mindset selling that thanks to Tasia and thanks to all the deep conversations we've had mm -hmm. in building this platform and our model that we're talking about being the CRM the chief relationship manager. Mm -hmm. And that's everything. And I know for me, that's been one of my secret sauces in my career is really being a person who's a great listener, a great communicator, but more importantly, a great manager of relationships. For me, you know, I don't really get caught up on terms because I see the salesperson, whatever we want to call them, mm. is a corporate <laughs> athlete that's got to get some numbers. I agree. That's got to get some results. So whether you call yourself a sales rep, some business development account manager, you got to get some numbers. You got to get some product moving. You got to get some services bought. So let's not get too caught up with what your title is. We all will agree that you got to get some numbers. But you got to produce some numbers and some results because whatever they call you, if you're not getting some numbers, man, you might be out of a job. But now I'm, I'm going to challenge that a little bit because I think about in the terms of the keynote speaking world. Hmm. You never say, oh, I'm just a keynote speaker. You are very clear that you are a Hall of Fame hmm. keynote speaker. Hmm. And so think about that. You understand the difference. And I think, oh, there was a book I remember. Oh, was that Romeo and Juliet? Like, there's no other name, the power of a name. Hmm. Names matter. Hmm. And True. I think we need to be very clear about names matter and the power that's within a name. So I think we all need to teach our people, especially ones that's connected to Peak Performers Huddle, the huddle and everything that we do. No, if you called yourself a salesperson today, let's make today the last day that you said that. Today, the, the, we want you elevating that. No, you are a CRM. That's our term. Well, actually, I'm no longer a speaker. I'm a business advisor. Thank you. Okay, all right. Well, praise God. Okay. Thank, thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, look, Jim, hold on. Let me just, hey. <laughs> Words do matter. Words I think, matter. Yeah, yeah. I think your point is a good one. We don't want to go crazy with, you know, just renaming everything. But also to Antoinette's part, point, this is framing really the mindset. And if I'm a seller, then I kind of try to close. If I'm a value creator, I try to open relationships. Mm. We're talking really That's relationship good. strategies. So, so first name is value. Last name is sales. Value is the input, sales is the output. 
problem is we using the last name first. Go get the sale. The client says, well, bring me the value. I'll give you the sale. No problem. But we got the order kind of mixed up. And so I think while this might seem like silly wordplay, don't be lazy with your language. Words matter. And success in sales, I just used the term, is 80% mindset. 20% skill set. And I know we're going to talk about mindset, skill set, and toolkit. Let's go for it. And that's my first question. And, and I think we all will agree, mm. no matter what you call yourself, okay. if that person knows you're selling them something, yes, sir. you're not good at what you do. Okay. Oh, yeah. Smart person. Person. Exactly. They Got should it. never feel like you're trying to sell me something. Yeah. That is the biggest turn off okay. on earth. When I think about being an athlete, I had to have a NBA mindset. I had to convince myself I was good enough. But also I had to develop a skill set. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can believe all you want, but if you don't have an NBA skill set, mm -hmm. you're fooling yourself. Mm -hmm. What's the mindset of a very successful business development person? Yeah, sure. Well, hey, listen, the mindset of a successful business development person is the mindset of a shark. But a different kind of shark. The shark, type of shark that ain't just trying to close, the kind of shark that's trying to open mm -hmm. the dialogue, the relationship. So when we say shark mindset selling, it's not just about closing. Mm -hmm. It's about opening. It's not just about selling. It's about creating value. We want the best of both worlds. So the mindset of today's shark is the more helpful you are, the more value you create. And the more value you create, the more business you can get. I'm going to say that one more time. This thing called sales is really about being helpful. The more helpful you are, mm -hmm. the more value you create. The more value you create, the more business you can get and keep. Problem is we chasing the sale, we not chasing the value. Well, we trying to sell instead of solve. We trying to sell instead of serve. Now, we know we got the sale. But we've got to start with value, serving, solving, selling. And I think that that mind shift and that language shift represents the today's shark. Whether that shark is a sales manager, the owner of the company, or what we used to call or still call salesperson or business development officer. I think that that's big. Some people make the mistake of getting into this transactional mindset yes. opposed to this relationship building mindset. So talk to my people who might be young to the game, mm -hmm. need to get smoother, need to change their mindset. How do you shift from being transactional to relational to where it's not just a one-off, man? It's, it becomes a gift that keeps on giving. How do you make that pivot? Well, we're talking about one of them, which is the mindset uh, shift. But how do you shift your mind? You shift your language. Change your language. Change your conclusions. Mm. Mm. Uh, if you change your language, you change your conclusion. Now, I'm not saying to everybody that's watching today, you need to change your business card from whatever it is. But parenthetically in your mind, you think, okay, they call me. A, I'm a sales rep. I'm at merry-go-round. But I bet you Antoinette, even when she was a sales rep, was thinking, hey, I'm here to help. I'm here to solve. And she kicked booty because of that. And so it's the inner dialogue. Are you trying to close? In fact, let's just do this because I got one in, on the left side, one on the right. Antoinette said it's about relationships. When a lady senses that you're there to sell and to close, things tend not to go well. But if she think, thinks that you're there for, to develop a relationship and you're asking questions on that date and you're engaging, that usually turns out a lot better. We're talking relationship strategies. We already know what happens on relationships. You got to put in it some time and have quality conversation. I don't know, Lady Bond, what do you think about that? I mean, is sales relationships and this thing about, you know, dating, is, does it apply? I totally agree, Daniel, and I'm glad you brought that up because that's how we landed on the chief relationship manager because we thought about this in terms of relationship building. Mm -hmm. You would never... Meet a man. Mm. I would never meet a man. Mm. I would never meet a man. Mm. And I hope that you as a man would never meet a woman. Mm. And think of the first moment, like, mm. okay, we about I'm to close. get it on. I'm like, right. I mean, maybe in 2024. But I mean, in terms of, I mean, back, okay, back when I grew up, you weren't doing that. Come on. Maybe now. I'll try just like a lady. I don't know. Okay. I don't know you could so Okay. But, but, right. Smoking my, just my, like a lady. My expectation was, Come and on. it still is, that Come I have on. two daughters in their 20s. And you expect? And I expect, I'm like, look, you can tell very clearly what the guy wants from the relationship. That's your job to know that. Mm. And so I can sense, and back when I was on the market, I could tell when a guy was like, hey, baby, hey, baby. Right. It, was, it was clear. 
But the ones that knew that I could understand that wanted a little bit more, mm. the approach was different. So it really lends to the approach. Mm -hmm. You could tell what someone wants by their approach. Mm -hmm. Now, if they approach you and they want to spend time and ask a few questions and learn more about me and be a little more curious, hey, mm -hmm. I'm a little more open. Mm -hmm. Versus that one that's like, what time is it? I'm like, right. it's like, Ugh. For me, that was not attractive. Yes, there's some ladies that respond, or some women mm -hmm. that respond to that, absolutely. But I'm teaching my daughters in the world of relationship Hey, let me tell you, I, I, hey, simply put, I'm like, there's a three month rule. You got to be clear. You set the expectations. And like three months in terms of quality time, what you're doing, I mean, where you're letting the relationship flow and lead to. It's all about quality time and the same thing in this business development space. Let's hold on right here and just <laughs> make, build this bridge. And then you got this look on your face. The cameraman can see it too. I just, I let I'm the sorry. audience can see it. Hey, I was in the, my 20s once. On the small <laughs> sale. It's about quantity of calls, just like chasing lady. On the major sale, it's about quality of calls. Mm -hmm. Now, the question becomes, who are we talking to? We talking to quantity of call? That's volume. Excuse me, sir, Delta Visa. I mean, they say quantity, I mean quantity, man. And how many people did you talk to today? Yeah. Uh, okay, if you talk to 99, talk to 199. <laughs> but on the consultative side, the major sale, they say quality of call. Did you uncover needs? Did you talk about their goals and their gaps, their strategy? And so, again, I think this word confusion, we say sales, but you got you to gotta divide that up. What type of sale is the set? So sales, and then the question is what type of sales? Because that's going to give you clues about different mindset, skill set, toolkits. You know what? You just made an amazing comment. And that just made me think about even like, you know, our daughter's working works for us. And I think her sales approach was more or less like, I got a thousand emails a day. And it was like very much into this, like, oh, I got all these emails out. Yeah. And it was like, and I know I would have somebody like, well, how many relationships have you built? Mm. And I want people to remember, I love the saying, how you do anything how is you how do you do it. everything. everything. Mm. How you do anything is really how you do everything. Mm. And so you can't be a person that really care about relationship building and you really don't execute relationship building. Mm, it's outstanding. Ooh, I mean, really. I mean, really. Come on, we talking about the money and the honey. So let, let's okay, talk. Go ahead, go ahead. Know, tell let, them let, about it. Let, let's get down a little further and let's talk pipeline. Okay. Because again, I'm a guy who just kind of learned business very organically being an entrepreneur. And I remember early on, I made sure that I filled that pipeline. And man, for the first three years in business, man, I just jammed that pipeline. You know, we never had to babysit deals. You didn't have to negotiate, you know, give away the farm. I have learned. Yes, sir. Out of 23 years in business as an entrepreneur with not having a big sales force, this okay. is the sales force right here. Yes, sir. Is that there is nothing more important than that pipeline. Yes, sir. Give us your thoughts on pipeline, pipeline management, nurturing your pipeline. Is there anything more important for for um, business development person than to really nurture and develop their pipeline? You know, my thought is, what what are you doing all day <laughs> if you're not developing and nurturing your pipeline? I, so there's that's a that's an obvious yes. Like that, yeah. that's number one. New business development, nurturing is an activity is number one. But what I've discovered over the last twenty years is that. While we all know business development is kind of like the number one strategy and skill, what I notice is the corporate athletes, oftentimes they're confusing movement for advancement. Mm -hmm. They move and you see one of those uh, athletes, they run from one sideline to another sideline. Mm -hmm. You got movement, but you don't have advancement. And, and, and as a result, they end up dancing, but not advancing. And I think business development officers that are watching today, small firm, medium firm, solopreneur, entrepreneur, whatever it might be, you've got to make this distinction. Am I confusing movement with advancement? Am I dancing around, did lunch, sent some emails, made some calls, you know, sent a text. I'm dancing around, but I'm not advancing the relationship. And I think that that gives us the ability to discern, do we have suspects or prospects? Yeah. Because, you know, you do a lot of business development activity, yes. but you don't have productivity. And so 
we can't be chasing everybody. We got to figure out who the right target is. Otherwise, we got suspects, prospects, some in the middle, and then you have a time management and a return on investment issue. Mm, I don't know. What you think? You know, I, I, as I, I agree think with about, you. Yeah. When you're saying that, I'm thinking about when I did pharmaceutical sales, the number one thing that I knew was, well, who are the physicians that are writing the prescriptions? And if I wasted my time, seriously, with low-writing physicians that did not really, did not write prescriptions to my disease state, that gets you fired. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, you would be completely fired because you did not have the productivity. And it's like, oh, no one cared that, hey, I saw 10 doctors today. Right. It wouldn't matter. So what I saw 10 doctors but they weren't the right doctors. And so one of the fundamentals you learn in this industry is you gotta go to the right people with the right message. The right people, and we call it in our coaching program, the A customer. Mm -hmm. Don't work hard to make a Z customer an A customer. Mm -hmm. Because think about that, when you have a Z customer, you gotta take them all the way up to A. That's good. That's a long, heavy lift mm -hmm. versus if you really begin and get more focused with your targeting, your targeting will let you know what an A customer look like. And at the very least, you're going to land on a B. Now, beyond a B customer, you that should be where you live in. A and B, A and B, A and B. Well, you do. I mean, otherwise. A and B? I'm saying A and B. And that Antoinette, Antoinette Bond, Bond A, a and B. A, B. A, B. The queen, A, B. And I'm telling you, seriously. And she says she don't want to deal with no C. I mean, why, why, I don't deal with C's. I wasn't, I wasn't a C student. I didn't do C's. Uh, I'm like, because like you said earlier, I was the one that, I went and looked at your papers. I'll make yes, sure you I got did. the A. Yes, you're you my did. first C. You married a C student. <laughs> I never would have thought that before I met Chicago. you. Let me let me C correct myself. Chicago. You married a former C student uh, yeah. who's been yeah. transformed <laughs> straight A's. And to be honest, if the teacher gives out A's, you know you can get actually, one. If you a told former me, C student. If you had told me you were a C student when I met you, I, we probably would have gotten much, fur, much further. You were not a C student when I met you. That came out later in the conversation. I would have never. I wouldn't be here. But anyway, go so back to so returning back to, to the account manager thing. What I hear is. <laughs> ideal client profile. Yes. That's what top performers do. They slow down, yes. they think on paper, and they define their ideal client or their ideal prospect. It's just like personal relationships. If you don't know who you're looking for, you just dating folk, you're gonna lose a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of love. So top performers slow down to speed up and they're discerning who are our A's, our B's, and you know what? We just don't have the capacity to deal with C. We sure enough ain't got no time for no G's and no F's and Q's and Z. So let, let's unpack well, this more. Well said, and I'm glad you said it. And that's what our SMS is all about. I mean, because a lot of times you're wasting so much energy and capacity, wasting time really targeting the wrong people. And I would say that's what I love about the training, and I'm glad that we have people here that over, I mean, I think, add it all up. We were, were what, 50, 60 years of of oh, yeah. sales and business development yeah. in our arsenal. Yeah. And that's the training you get when you're connecting with us. You're dealing with people who are experts in business development. And because we're experts, we can tell you, don't waste your time there. Focus your energy there. Outstanding. That's what you need to do. That's what you want from your training. You want from your trainers, people that can tell you, know why, because we've been there, done that, we know it. Hey, and just to let them know, hey, we got as many Clark Kent stories as we do Superman. So when we talk about expertise, it's not that we're claiming that we're know-it-alls. No. We've just already made the mistakes We've so been you there. don't have to. I'm always going to these incentive groups <laughs> for these high performers. Okay. And they all had the same name. Okay. Diamond Club. Okay. Platinum Club. Yes, sir. President's Club. All I don't right. care what industry, I don't care what company, they always have a club okay. of high performers. Okay. And one thing I love about Shark Mindset Selling, you make it clear. Mm. The difference between an average performer mm. and a high performer in the sales game. Yes, sir. Can we break that down right now today so everyone at home listening completely understands and it's crystal clear with, with clarity like a radio station that's in full view of that little dial that we had back in the day. What is the real difference between an average performer and a top performer so our listeners can take this home and smoke it? So they know what they need to become. Okay, well, uh, we've been talking about this, yeah. but let's nail it in three additional pieces. Because we've said mindset, 
language, ideal profile. I mean, so all of those, I mean, we've been talking about it. So you ought to have a little list. Yeah. But let's go a little step further. The next would be pre-call planning. Top performers think on paper, they do some pre-call planning. They anticipate. They're the chief relationship officer, the chief revenue officer, the CRM, the chief uh, uh, relationship manager. Pre-call planning, planning what questions to ask, doing some research on the client, having a clear call objective, all that stuff, right? I, that all falls under pre-call planning. So, for example, one of our employees was selling. Yeah. Who was born and raised in Minnesota. Okay. She made a sales call. Okay. And the woman she was talking to on the phone was from Minnesota. Okay. And she never connected the dot. And we were like, yeah. That's like a layup. For sure, <laughs> that, sure, that, that's, sure. So that's what you call pre-call planning. You might take a little look on LinkedIn. Five you might minutes. go over to pro and say, oh, okay, I got something here. We went to the same school. We went to, from the same town or whatever. So that's a part of pre-call planning to really have a strategy on how you might be able to connect 100%. with that client. Well, Antoine, I'll see oh, you there. Go yeah, ahead. I'm going to say address that because to me, that to me is the mind, that's a mind, that was a mindset fail to be, to be honest mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. That's mindset. Mm -hmm. Because you could have done all the planning in the world when someone tell you and make a connection to someone that you are or you some experience that you had and you don't take that layup and really take that as a layup and like, I'm about to dunk this moment. Yeah. That's how you dunk the ball because you created a connectivity. I mean, the, the game of business development is like, oh, I'm looking for a dunk moment. Yeah. And she volleyed it up said, I'm from Minnesota, I'm in Minnesota. And for you not to receive that and say, oh my God, I grew up in Minnesota. That's why I went to school. If you don't use that as an open door moment, and I actually see people do it. Like, I'm like, oh my God, relationship management is about trying to figure out how many connected points you can find to strengthen the relationship. Right. I want to connect with you on about five, six, seven different things. So we can have an amazing conversation and then, oh, by the way, this is why I'm here. Right, because you could take that 10 minutes and talk about Prince, Purple Rain, Viking, State <laughs> Fair, Minnesota Temple, oh, Minnesota like, yeah, weather, stuff. cold, okay. snow, KG, ice fishing. Whatever. You could rock that for 15 minutes exactly. and, oh, by the way. <laughs> and it should be and, a, oh, by oh, the way. by the way. Oh, by the way. And so what I'd like our audience to hear, you're both spot on. It's mindset. That particular sales rep was probably think I could go make a sales call. Yeah. Not that I got to develop a relationship. Because if you think and develop a relationship and you hear Minnesota, I'm from Minnesota, that, that might organically happen. I think the second thing is skill set. Because if I'm thinking I want to develop a relationship, then I'm going to just take five minutes, go to LinkedIn, see the name, see right. the face, see that they went to school in Minnesota. So when I call, and not only do I have that mindset, I now have done some skill set and I can make good things happen. Hey. Now look, these are 10% shifts. If you shift your mindset by 10%, improve your skill set, your pre-call planning by 10%, that's a 20% performance improvement. Yeah. Oftentimes the difference between winning and losing, getting a return phone call, or we'll talk to you in a couple of months, is 10 to 20%. So you know what, as we get ready to wrap this thing up, sure. and so I'm glad, this is such a great conversation, and I mean, I feel like we've touched on enough that you should, I'm hoping you're a little more curious about what we do in Peak Performers Huddle mm -hmm. with our Shark Mindset um, Sales Training Division. Mm -hmm. That Daniel, I mean, Daniel, I love that we have you, Appreciate that. we have you book going to do different keynotes and Absolutely. trainings for different companies. So if you want Daniel to come in and do a training for you, let let me know. Let us know. That's yeah. what we're here or for. Or virtual. Um, They're available virtual. But we also do, let's talk about like our sprints that we do. Yeah. We do sales sprints. Well, we do close more deal challenges. Hey, let's well, talk about A it. A to the B, um, you are now talking about the toolkit. Oh. Because we've covered my skill set. And I think one of the things that differentiates top performers from average performers is a toolkit. And in that toolkit is a community. In that toolkit is systems, their visuals, their reinforcements, their sprints or challenges. Let's unpack that. But that essentially is it. Because without reinforcement, there will be no adoption. Which is, re reinforcement sounds optional. You yeah. know, I, I, I did the training. I went to the keynote. I know I should do the reinforcement. No, reinforcement sounds optional. We should call it adoption. 
So when we're talking about like a 30-day, 90-day package, do you want to reinforce? We ought to say, do you want to adopt and implement what you learn? And the mm. obvious answer is yes. We go to church on Sunday. For other folks, it might be Saturday, Friday, or maybe you're not going at all. That's okay. The point here is when we go on Sunday, you hear a, a sermon. How much follow-up or reinforcement is there to, typically to that specific sermon? It None. really isn't. It's zero. <laughs> and so we go back to next week and we keep going, keep going, but we don't keep growing. Mm. Top performers have a reinforcement system or an adoption system, and they hire coaches to help. Coaches are part of the toolkit, quite mm. frankly. That's good. That's good, really good. what coaching, coaching is part of it. Well, for more information about our sales training, you should go to Peak Performance Huddle. That's mm. why we call this the Huddle. Mm. This is our podcast where, where we uh, peak, peak Performers mm. Huddle. Okay. And you know what? Get on that website, and it's easy to find our sales department, sales division. And I'm telling you what, no matter what your budget is, your how big your team is, we have a solution. We have courses. We have trainings. We have virtuals. And let me tell you something, man. Daniel Grissom has been such an awesome influence for not only our company, but for me. Because when I'm selling, I hear Daniel's voice. You know, just today I had a sales call, and the young lady said she was from Canada. And I was like, oh. I used to live in Saskatoon. It was like a month. <laughs> <laughs> but I told her, I used to live in Canada. I lived in Saskatoon. Really? She goes, well, I'm from Winnipeg. And I was like, Winnipeg? That's just north of Minnesota. Yeah. She was like, yeah, we would go to Minnesota to go shopping. And for 15 minutes, we talked about Canada. We talked about Winnipeg, which is almost Minnesota. Right. And then answered that joint and called later and was like, man, that woman was talking. I was like, good. I want to keep her talking. Because yeah. when I was a younger sales professional, I tried to do all the talking. Mm. And I've learned, like, ooh, that is not a good look when you do all the talking. Mm. So I have learned. As I become a veteran sales professional, mm. I want to ask great questions mm. and shut up and listen. And she talked and she talked and she talked. And on All the right. back end, on the back end, <laughs> come, come on, give me a second. Okay. On the back end, she was like, okay, well, send me some information. I'll get with my team and we'd love to do some work with you guys on your upcoming Accelerate Conference in Canada. Boom. She did all the talking. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for another edition of The Huddle. Um, like before, make sure if you like our content, make sure you subscribe. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we want people to follow us because we want to help people grow. We are so yeah. serious mm. about our community getting to the next level. Mm. So thank you for being with us again. We will see you in the next episode of the Huddle. Thank you, Daniel. Hey, hey glad I mean, for having me here. Hey, I mean, hopefully we brought, awesome. you, we brought you some news you can use. Yeah.